power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Just bless him for this privilege tonight to hear, to learn. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. That mighty presence. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. As we worship you, let all this joy that fills our hearts bring a hunger and a hope to those who strain so far. Very powerful song. As we bow in adoration, strings please, and stand in reverent awe, show your majesty and glory. Let your anointing fall as we declare your name, Lord Jesus, as the only name who saves. Let the power of your salvation fill each heart we pray. As we worship you, Lord, as we worship you tonight, let your presence come mighty in our midst. As we worship you, yeah. as we worship you, as we worship you, Shabakata la Bambriya Silavana la Lama. Hallelujah. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. And you are mighty in this place. 
faithful God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sing you are mighty. You are mighty in this place. Worship him from the depths of your heart. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are awesome in this place. 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 Faithful God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Your hands and worship the God of wonders. You do wonders. wonders Shabbat the Lord.
bless his name thank you for your presence oh god part of the service. bless you tonight take it higher just clash the symbol there is this thing in my spirit Adonai he's a lamb of God you are worthy, worthy of my prayer. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my heart. Adonai. Adonai. He's the Lamb of God. He's worthy of our praise. You are worthy, worthy of our praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign. Adonai. One more time. Adonai. Adonai. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My love, my life 
blessed we are rounding up the series on financial dominion something will come upon you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah while I slept this morning there are few times I have very prophetic encounters hallelujah and while I slept in a dream I was in a place and it was just half maybe half of this place and I was ministering please don't stop playing don't stop playing the Bible says I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp we are not just playing strings you should know these instrumentalists can you increase the volume there's the power of God in this room just this room there is a strong anointing presence of angels angelic presence mighty angelic presence just across hallelujah listen to my story and while i began to minister hallelujah when i finished ministering Bishop Oyedeko walked in and when he walked in he was about to lay hands on me and in the dream Shadrach just standing where he's standing right now he came just like some of you who watched the impartation that he did to Dr. Paul and Enche so when he held the jar with the anointing oil he fell off Shadrach fell off so I ran and I grabbed it and I was praying and telling the congregation passionately prepare yourself something is about to come upon you 
and so i got down on my knees and he was you know how he shouts like releasing everything from the depths of his heart and while that was happening i was down on my knees and while i was down on my knees he poured the oil when he poured the oil on me he shouted this was a prophetic shout he said be blessed i take you to a new dimension of wealth be blessed be blessed that was a prophetic pronunciation be blessed he kept prophesying it be blessed it was a dangerous encounter be blessed he said you have been faithful with little be blessed he said i bless you and while he spoke there was such impartation from my head to my toe my head it was it was such an effulgence of power i knew that i made contact with something in the realm of the spirit it was such an impartation of power and i also know that it was an anointing for enlargement it was an anointing for expansion a mysterious dimension of increase and expansion until this evening i had not recovered from that encounter i woke up under a dense cloud of god's power god's glory my life is full of encounters this is what the apostolic ministry is about that you open up doors you open up gates and i'm about to prophesy before i start teaching would you open up the gates gates open up the doors open up the gates open up the doors open up the gates open up the doors open up the gates open up the gates father over your people open up the gates it's a season of light and dominion lift your hands as i release something upon your life before i begin to teach listen i want you to believe me we're not just talking stories please i need somebody on the bass guitar lift your hands you will take something this night you will take an anointing this night you will take it everywhere i see the angels of the lord at the count of three I will release it standing in this apostolic office my god and my king whatever it is that you deposited tonight at the count of three i command the angels that work with my anointing i compel an impartation take it take it take it take it take it outside take it take it outside take it angels of fire Take it, impartations of power, light. I open your understanding. Shake it, take a baba baba baba. Shake it, bara da ba. Shake it, yada da da da. Shake it, yada mo. Scope it, yada ba. Shake it, tell me what Light. Let there be light, light upon your spirit, man. Light. Fire upon your candle, fire upon your candle, light. I open your eyes in the spirit to understand that which the spirit will be communicating tonight. Say na 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 na, say na 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 na, say ba da da da, 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 say ba
Something must happen to your life tonight. Something must happen to your destiny. This is Bethel, the place of bread. This is Bethel, the place of power. This is Bethel, the place of dominion. And God appeared to them in Shiloh. Every power, every force, every entity, lift up your heads, all ye gates. Lift up your heads, although it's a financial series, but I command healing, I command deliverance, I command breakthrough right now, right now. Every power. Keeping God's people down tonight. Take your hands off the people of God. Go, 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 go. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hello, in Madonna. Elohim Madonna Elohim Elohim Madonna Elohim Elohim Madonna praises forever and I forget not your, your benefit thank you Holy Spirit thank you Spirit of the living God your presence is heaven to us this is all that we have meeting there is always one prayer that I pray that God will open your eyes to see where you stand all the time because if you can recognize you will know that his presence is here Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with you 
no man is able to do this this is not Joshua Selman I have no business with what is happening hallelujah we glorify your name hallelujah father tonight bless us open our eyes to see something powerful and I pray that this will not just be Pentecostal activities but that something will enter our hearts that will last us a lifetime in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down if you can those who cannot sit down just let them let's, let's get into the word at this point you can sit anywhere on the ground anywhere just find somewhere and sit down please there will be mighty impartations tonight as I teach although I'm teaching on finances it is because of the character of what the Spirit of God will be doing tonight we're rounding up the series on financial dominion and it's going to be an amazing explosion of the Spirit in this place tonight so everyone, while you're sitting down, please be your brother's keeper. something maybe in a minute or two especially for the sake of those who came outside of this city you see when people see things like this they get very touched some get very shocked and this is the kind of thing most people want to see in their ministries and most people believe pastor can you imagine that? most people believe that the way to get it is by just sitting to covet an anointing really let me tell you the truth there are certain things that you will enter that realm you will not even know you have entered the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man what god has prepared not for prayer warriors not for them who are fasting them that love him there's something about the love of god when you love God beyond power, beyond ministry, beyond rema, beyond revelation, whatever it is. Nothing can replace your love for God. Not fasting, not prayer. I don't care if you pray for 100 days and fast for one year. There are many prayer warriors who are far from the presence of God. Because they are only praying as a way because they have linked the anointing to prayer so many people pray as a way of priming the spirit the spirit is a personality he's not a robot he has emotions he can feel the heartbeat of a lover we love you forever we love you forever we love you forever Beyond anointing, beyond prosperity. Forever. We love you. Forever. We love you. Forever. Beyond our successes and our failures altogether. We love you. Yes, we love you. We love you. Forever. We love you. Whether you bless us or not, it doesn't make any difference as far as our love for you is concerned. When a 
man is getting married to a woman they tell them in sickness and in health for better for worse my point is not whether you believe that thing but you must get to that point where your fraternity with the spirit cannot be compromised by anything in time take every other thing from me and leave the love of Jesus and I have enough and I mean it from the depths of my heart see this is the secret of the presence of God the Bible says in John 14 21 it says he that keepeth my commands is he that loves me and when he loves me my father will love him and we will come to him and manifest ourselves to him hallelujah I was looking for a particular message I had searched for it online again and again and again I couldn't find it and then I went to sleep and in the dream the Spirit of God took me to my laptop and I found the message and he played it for me in a dream completely I didn't find the message in the physical but in the dream I had the message that's the greatest key I know the love of God I don't just mean the lust you have for what he gives uncompromising passion if you never bless me in this life I won't say I won't be angry but leaving you is not an option my bond with God is greater than a salt covenant it's greater than the covenant between a mother and her child I love him forever I love him forever I love him forever you know why the Spirit of God is moving us towards this direction of the love for God because we are talking about one of the greatest things that can keep the love of God out of our lives Mormon. the only thing that God that is compared with God he says you cannot serve God and mammon that spirit that has caused men to go to hell that spirit thank you Jesus financial dominion part 4 we are rounding up tonight bless be the name of the Lord we have come to the end of ourselves take over Jehovah we have touched the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have touched the end of ourselves so take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah This is the kind of experience with the spirit that makes you very powerful in the earth realm it is these kinds of people that the bible speaks about that he reproved kings for their sake he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed nor do my prophets it's not just one who is called into prophetic ministry no there is a level of intimacy where you truly become the bride of Christ and it becomes his responsibility as a husband hallelujah financial dominion part 3 help us Holy Spirit when we began this series in part 1 I'll do a quick revision of part 1, 2, 3 for those who are just coming by the way please help me celebrate my friend and his lovely wife Pastor Pete Rock 
the senior pastor of house on the rock mina hallelujah thank god and we want to celebrate prof too he's been away for a while thank you sir hallelujah pastor williams has been missing in action <laughs> it's good to have you and mr ojele thank you sir god bless you thank you hallelujah i said it is very wasteful and even disastrous to give people informations they are not prepared to receive hallelujah remember when we started this series we didn't even talk about finances at all i said to us that it is wasteful please and please i encourage everyone if you were not here part one two and three you need it is a very comprehensive series and it's already blessing a lot of people and please try to get it it's free there is no reason why you shouldn't get it hallelujah and i told you that the secret to receiving anything in life is number one you must recognize the need for it god is not committed to giving you anything you have not expressed need for he met blind Bartimaeus and said what do you want me to do what else does a blind man want he can want money hallelujah and then number two you go for knowledge number three you take action then we spoke about the concept of wealth and prosperity remember that was part one and i said the word prosperity comes from the word prosper and it means to do well hallelujah prosperity means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs are and i told us that in the kingdom please listen when we talk about prosperity there's the general sense of prosperity that we address in the business world and there's kingdom prosperity our focus in this teaching and always is kingdom prosperity i told us that according to the word of god there are five areas you must do well in to be called prosperous remember what's number one come on now help me number one spiritual prosperity number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health number four financial prosperity number five relational prosperity if you fail in any of this area you are not prosperous according to kingdom standards so you see that financial prosperity is just an aspect hallelujah of kingdom prosperity and i i did talk a bit on them i told you spiritual prosperity means to be born again filled with the holy spirit and then to understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom and also to conform to the image and the character of christ mental prosperity means that your mind consisting of your will emotions and intellect are well developed and deployed to improve the quality of your life hallelujah spirituality does not negate the use of our minds hallelujah and then bodily prosperity means to be free from sickness to be free from diseases to be free from infirmity alongside yokes and all oppressions of darkness and then we define financial prosperity as freedom from poverty please listen lack and the effects that come with them you must add this if poverty did not create any effect we will not concentrate on it our major focus the reason why we are waging war on poverty is because of the effect hallelujah it means having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it that's financial prosperity it's not having financial abundance anybody can dash you money but a supernatural ability that can replenish it and can sustain it that's financial prosperity and then relational prosperity having quality relationships that give you opportunity to express love and care to improve yourself to learn to share to affect and if and impact lives hallelujah we define financial dominion and you'll find that even relevant today we've defined it in every um, of the parts financial dominion is the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship 
alongside the effects that they bring this is what we define as financial dominion financial dominion is not having money financial dominion is the ability to conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and we listed some effects that come fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness i'm just trying to recap very quickly hallelujah and then part two we talked about the anatomy of god's economic system remember the internal workings we examined how the kingdom works and the first part was the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom can you remember why god blesses us what's the reason reason number one to live a comfortable life number two to finance the cause of christ on earth so winning the building of god's kingdom kingdom financing and i did say that it is god's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities what that means is that there are kingdom financiers those called specifically into this apostolic ministry of being distribution channels for the kingdom but everyone is supposed to be part of providing financial supplies for the building of the kingdom hallelujah and then number three to reveal the love of god this is why god blesses us so you must understand why believers are blessed in the kingdom if you do not understand you are not entitled to the blessings of heaven to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical and a definite way this is where we talk about helping the poor the hungry charity community projects nation building acts of love and kindness that defy religion gender race and social status hallelujah i mentioned something very important that wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's not an accomplishment it's a trust hallelujah then we spoke about the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance remember very very important the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance this was still in part two we spoke about the law of tithing and that's the law of open heavens we spoke about the law of seed time and harvest then we spoke about different um, givings in the kingdom offerings in the house of god kingdom investments we examine the concept of first fruit prophet offering vows and sacrifices and then we taught on the principle of seed faith remember the principle of seed faith um then the week before miracle service that's part three we went to the natural laws of wealth and prosperity and i told you that the problem with the body of christ is most times we stop at the spiritual laws we just teach people how to give how to tithe how to sow and so on and so forth and then they don't know what to do hallelujah they do not have that wisdom that understanding that ability to make to manage and to multiply their financial resources hallelujah so favor brings finances and lack of wisdom takes it out of believers so we must examine the natural law and there was one scripture proverbs 18 verse 16 that was the core scripture the gift of a man makes room for him remember that and brings him before great people we spoke about the concept of money we spoke about the concept of value and i told you to replace that word gift with the word value a man's value will make room for him and bring him before great men i told us that there are three things we need to experience financial dominion number one financial intelligence number two financial planning number three financial discipline financial intelligence means the understanding of the structure and the workings of money how does it work and then financial planning the distribution of your wealth remember our 30 70 principle remember god savings investment and then our expenditures then we spoke about discipline it takes discipline to stay through and follow through everything and today i'm going to be teaching something very very powerful hallelujah
I'm teaching tonight on how to become wealthy. That's the last part. How to become wealthy. Well, what you want to call wealth creation. I actually wrote in bracket here, becoming a money magnet. There are some things we cannot talk about here. This is not a business class. Investment mentality, financial vehicles, multiple streams of income, debt-free living, three to five year plan for wealth. We may not have all the time, but I'll be talking about how to create wealth. And you will be so blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. First Samuel 17, please. First Samuel 17 from verse 22 to 27. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have to rush. First Samuel 17 verse 22 to 27. Hallelujah. It's projected so let's just save time. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper. Can we have King James? Let's take away the new King James or Amplified. Thank you. And David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. 23. And as he talked with them, listen, behold, there came up the champion. Everybody say the champion. The Philistine of God, Goliath by name. So that was the champion. Out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, who was the man? The champion. So he was not just an ordinary man. The Bible called him the champion. Are you getting my point? Please listen. I want to share with you a very powerful principle. They fled from him and they were so afraid. Verse 25. And the men of Israel said, they were talking to David now, the small boy. Are you getting my point? He was a teenager. Have you seen this man that is come up? He said, surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed that champion. Is, it, is, is that in your Bible? The man who killed the champion. The king, whoever that king is. So this award was going to be given by the king. I told you wealth in the kingdom. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? Wealth in the kingdom is not just an achievement. It's a trust. The king, that means the king is sitting on his throne waiting for something. Are you getting my point? The king has wealth. The king has all kinds of blessings. He said, but the king is waiting. Please get this revelation. That the man who killed him, the king will what? Enrich with what kind of riches? Great riches. And will give him his daughter goodness and make his father's house free in Israel all of these blessings for whoever has the gods to confront a beast called Goliath you will be blessed tonight I'm about to blow your mind with something God shared with me goodness look at see look at this a ten-footed beast is just roaring and threatening these people and the Bible did not lie. You know, I like the Bible because it's fair to all men. It called Goliath a champion. Bible called Goliath a champion. Meaning he was a man who was killed. He was a man who had mastered the art of war. And when the nation of Israel saw him, together with their warriors, the Bible says they were afraid. And then the nation of Israel said, I mean, they, they spoke to David. David just had and that whoever notice they did not put gender they didn't put age is somebody learning something no gender no age he didn't even say if the person is a is an Israelite or an Ishmaelite he said whoever can kill Goliath the king has vowed that he will give him great riches one give him his daughter access connection uh, just follow me it's not just about a woman are you getting my point he will give him wealth he will give him his daughter and go to his family and make them free 
and david spake to the men that stood by him saying because he didn't hear well he said eh? what did you say again let me hear they said what shall be done to the man that killed this philistine notice david did not call him a champion he said what shall be done to this philistine and take it away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of god 27 and the people answered him after this man are saying so shall it be done to the man that killed him help us tonight open our eyes oh god and let us see what will get us out of certain realms into new ones forever in the name of jesus christ hallelujah genesis 41 please we choose your way we choose the way of wisdom genesis 41 from verse 33 it will be a very fast reading i just want to build on this and then i'll talk genesis 41 are you there now therefore this was joseph speaking look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of pharaoh and let them keep the food in cities 36 and let the and that the food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of egypt and the land perish not through the famine 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of god take note i want to connect certain dangerous things this night and then we'll pray in whom the spirit of god is 39 and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed ye this, there is none who is so discreet and wise as thou. 40. Thou shalt be what? Immediately. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. 42. We are reading to 44. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. 43. And he made him to be to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We began to talk about the concept of value. Hallelujah that your value is measured by your ability to solve problems is that true and to provide solutions the bible says the gift of a man the value of a man he didn't say it can find room he said it makes room that means before then there's there's no space the value the gift of a man can make room and bring that man before great people hallelujah I'm teaching tonight on the reward system of the kingdom how to be wealthy the reward system of the kingdom how lasting wealth is made managed and multiplied hallelujah everybody write this word down problem and write this word down to solution 
Aaron, good to see you. You're welcome all the way from Abuja. Bless you. Problems. This is a word that many people hate, but tonight I want to make you fall in love with it because it holds the key to your financial destiny. Say amen. Problems. People hate that word problems. Every time you hear of a challenge or a problem, we run away from it and we do not want to be associated with problems. Hallelujah. But let me tell you a few things that will bless you. You are ready to write? I'll dictate them. Number one, until there is a problem, you are unnecessary. Until there is a problem, you are unnecessary. I want to tell you some facts about problems. Until there is a problem, you are unnecessary. Look up. If you are not hungry, you do not need a chef or a cook. Is that true? If you don't have a patch in your tire, you don't need a vulcanizer. Is that true? If you don't need your hair to be done, you don't need a stylist or a salonist. Is that true? If you're not sick, you don't need Benny Hinn. Is that true? If you're not lacking wisdom, you don't need Mike Murdoch. Are you getting my point? If you don't need deliverance, you don't need Dr. Dickie or Lukoya. Are you getting my point? So, everyone, the moment you mention the names of people, the problems that they solve is what you can remember about them. When you talk of Tiger Woods, you talk of something, a problem that he was able to solve in the sports area or an impact that he was able to make. Solving problems and providing solutions. This is the irrefutable key. This one big key that holds the financial destiny of so many people i'm not talking about the kind of wealth that just comes as guesswork you don't know how it came you don't know how it sustained you are even afraid of the wealth because you think if you lose it you will never have it again remember we said financial dominion or financial prosperity is not just having abundance but the ability to replenish and sustain it hallelujah until there is a problem you are unnecessary number two the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems. The reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems. That's how the reward system of the kingdom functions. Hallelujah. Now look at me. Whether you sell the solution or you give it free, the reward system of the kingdom says every time you solve a problem a reward must come to you whether you sell it or give it free it doesn't make any difference are you getting my point now this is the justification for a pastor being rich if he does not sell the teaching none of you paid money to enter here is that true what is the reward of the person then if he is giving free what is the reward of a philanthropist there is a law, the reward system of the kingdom. Whether you give out the solution free or you sell it, the moment there is a dispensing of a solution from you, there is a trigger. Notice what he said in First Samuel. The king had given a decree. Whoever takes care of Goliath immediately, the king starts acting. Are you getting my point? And he will give him great riches and his daughter and set his family free hallelujah so the reward system of the kingdom is not just built around prayers trust me i pray but i'm telling you the reward system of the kingdom is not going to come by praying and fasting 100 days alone the reward system of the kingdom is not built entirely on favor are you getting me now lots of people like favor i love it too but let me tell you sustainable wealth is not built on favor through wisdom is a house built 
by understanding it is established and through knowledge the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing hallelujah many people in the body of Christ I said it the week before miracle service while we are dealing with part 3 that many pastors do not even know why they are rich they think they are rich because they are serving God yeah that's true but it's not so they are, they are wealthy because they are offering spiritual value are you getting what I'm saying now there is a transformation happening to you right now as I'm speaking to you I'm opening you to understand the structure of the kingdom are you getting my point now you are receiving impartations i am dispensing to you so my reward is tied to my solving problems if pastors knew this they would know their prosperity is not tied to their members and they will stop yoking members with all kinds of things gimmicks here and there if i teach you the word of god in truth and sincerely as a minister of the gospel I'm teaching in sincerity and truth and I am not blessed then God has lied the reward system of the kingdom are you getting me now do you know why I'm teaching you this because not everybody is called into the fivefold and the way pastors have taught the prosperity message you will need to be a pastor to prosper by that message what if you don't have a crowd are you getting my point but when you understand that the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems, we are going to connect it with the personality of the Holy Spirit in you. And you will see why every believer should not be poor. Hallelujah. Number three, a problem is an invitation for a reward. The problem a problem is not an obstacle that comes to kill you every time you see problems around you around the society it is God inviting you for a reward a problem is an invitation they saw a champion that cannot be conquered David saw a Philistine he was interested in knowing the what and what would happen hallelujah challenges and problems are an invitation to be rewarded this is how the kingdom is built pharaoh had a problem it was an opportunity for the lifting of joseph is that true daniel came as a solution the king had a dream no one could interpret it no one could even he could not even remember it but daniel came he solved the problem are you seeing that in scripture don't just think those guys were just selected by god to be rich just like that they solve problems whoever kills goliath the king gives great riches and sets his family free are you learning something tonight A problem is an invitation for a reward number four I just want you to write these facts down the problem you solve decides your significance in this life Manda the problem you solve decides your significance your significance is not tied to your background it's not even tied to your ability to speak in tongues your significance in life is tied to the problem that you solve that means that you are not insignificant because of your background and so on and so forth jesus was born in a manger a few people came but when he was exiting the earth there was a crowd watching him had nothing to do with nazareth hallelujah your significance is proportional to the problem that you solve your relevance and your significance is tied to the problem you solve that means every time you find yourself suffering 
from inferiority from complex prayer is not the only problem there is something you can do that can bring you out of that realm and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon there is something you can have that will make the king send for you and they will bring you out of certain realms is god speaking to someone tonight I just want to bring these points the way they are and I pray that you recognize and appreciate what I'm sharing. There are some of us that in our families we are not the firstborn but aside from our parents we are the ultimate determinants of what happened in that family. You know why? Because your significance in that family is not just tied to the age and the hierarchy it's tied to the problems and the solutions that you are providing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. The problem nearest to you is your exit out of your current season. The problem nearest to you. Every time you say, Lord, where is the door out of this problem, out of this situation? Start looking at the problem near you. That's the finger of God saying, get out. This is your door. I was teaching the students in the school of ministry and I drew a door. Those who are students here, what did we call the door? Problems. That's the name given to the door that brings great men out. What I'm sharing with you may sound very simple, but trust me, this is why there are lots of broke failures in the world today. The problem nearest to you is your exit from your current season notice you are where you are today your limitation is the limitation of the solution you provided last and if you do something higher you will rise out this is powerful this is profound watch this to the glory of god and with all humility this ministry is at the level that it is according to the progressions of the solutions are you getting my point now? I was I was at Pastor Pete Rock's place last week. It was a wonderful moment, by the way. Please celebrate him. Him and his wife they treated me so well. It was it was a wonderful time. I went to preach for him at his um, appreciation appreciation um, service, and. It was wonderful when I went there and I saw the expansion within a period of two years the expansion the increase the excellence I said this is it it's a law it's a law it works are you getting my point now when people come with results you know why there are so many of you sitting here and inside and outside some of you came as critics some of you came to confirm what you had some of you came because something happened to somebody around you and you could not deny it. It was too notable. Are you getting my point now? Some of you vowed the first time you heard of Koinonia. You warned yourself, warned your friends, warned everybody. Here you are. You know why? Because it's a dark world full of needs. This keeps us in the market forever. Are you getting my point now? Our advantage is the darkness of the world. This is what keeps us in ministry. That's why the Bible says, when you see darkness arise, and if you shine very well, even Gentiles will come to that light. And a time will come, kings, kings will see people coming. This is how a church grows. This is how God showed me. Gentiles first come. A time will come, it will be so notable, kings will start coming. See it? That's what the Bible said. Gentiles. A day will come, kings will come. Are you getting my point now? And it will be a privilege for them like Sheba. They will come with their gifts to honor the excellency of the wisdom and the hand of God upon your life. I want you to know that prosperity is not a myth, it's not a legend, it's not a miracle, it's not a mystery. It's a formula. Gentiles. Gentiles do not come to see you. They don't care about you. It is your light they are coming for. And kings to the brightness of your rising hallelujah 
I just shared with you a powerful revelation. I have some deep revelations that the Holy Spirit put. And he told me, one time I had a vision, Pastor, and I saw lots of white men. It wasn't this meeting. I don't even know if it was in this city. A lot of white men, people coming, and I saw all kinds of gifts and rewards, and I was flattered. I was wondering. I said, goodness. And God said, you just continue what you are doing and see where it will end you. Do you know this is how great men started? Nobody gives you any guarantee to start ministry. You don't find a thousand members signing form and say, just start. It's not political party that says I will vote for you. There is something that gives you an audacity. So when there are three people you can be preaching, you know that the world is too dark for you to be ignored. So you can criticize a man, your problem will push you. You may hate me, but there is this treasure. God did it in such a way, you can't take it without me. We must go together. If it's in a plane, we'll go together. Ay, 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 ay. I have a very big God. He is always by my side. A mighty God. There's one part. Satan come out for oh yeah. There are two ways to bind the devil. One is by prayer, another is by revelation. There is an understanding you can have that makes the presence of Satan become a mirage in your life. It doesn't exist anymore. Believe me. Somebody's spirit is fired up. When you ask God for a new season, a new dimension or greater significance, he will reward you by empowering you to provide greater solution. Are you getting that? Every time you say, Lord, I am tired of where I am. Take me. He won't just come and just lift you vaguely. He will empower you to solve more problems. So when we start praying and say, Lord, bring increase for us in Koinonia and bless us. God will give us an ability to raise only three dead people. Do you think there will be increase? Three dead people alone, confirmed. When that happens, you will come here 12 o'clock and sit in the overflow. Let me tell you something. Get what I'm saying. It's a very powerful principle. It has nothing to do with ministry. It applies in every area of your life. Remember the story I shared with us. Can you remember the story in Enugu? Is in Enugu? One of the places. Pastor, there was something like a bomb blast. And muddy water started coming out of the ground. And it was healing the sick. When, when Jake sent the video to me. And I watched it. I started, I, I first felt sad, but later on I started rejoicing. It is our turn to shine. Hey! It is our turn to shine. No devil will stop it. It is our turn to shine. It looks like this is arrogance. It's not arrogance. It's confidence that comes from something that is not even of myself. remember i shared with you two scriptures i'm about to connect because he said upon daniel was the spirit of the gods if you have if you catch the revelation of what i'm sharing you can sit down with a cup of gary and be dancing like a madman because you know that it's a matter of time you are getting out of you will snap yourself you will make sure you you document it because the book you will write from it alone will bless you Money is not a miracle, nor is it a mystery, but a reward for solving problems. Money, I insist, is not a miracle. If you get miracle money, your bank account is a sign and a wonder. It's just a language God is speaking. Become a master's problem solver. A master problem solver and you sign out of a life of poverty forever 
become a master problem solver just write what i'm telling you you are either a problem solver or you are a problem yourself you are either solving problems or you are creating them you are either solving problems or you are the problem yourself hallelujah when god wants to promote you he gives you a greater problem to solve write this and start it you will need it in your life when god wants to promote you he will give you a greater problem to solve so when it was time to announce david goliath showed up other people were seeing an obstacle david was seeing a door he said i didn't know it would be this fast for me to be blessed i didn't know it would take 24 hours for me to be announced what reward and they told him your family will be free you will have a wife without toasting her you will have great wealth all for free he said come on give it to me where is that mountain <laughs> hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying The size of your Goliath determines God's confidence about you. The size of your Goliath is an expression of how much God has confidence in you. Some of you are already thanking God for what you are going through. The size of your Goliath is how much God is beating his chest about you. Jesus hallelujah the size of your Goliath failures in life are those who run away from problems never run away from problem it's like repeating a class hallelujah never run away from problems it is your exit out of your current season I told you the size of your Goliath determines how much God has a confidence. God has confidence. And then the size of your throne is determined by what kind of Goliath you kill. The Bible says above thrones, there are different kinds of thrones. I'm sharing with you very simple and powerful things problem solving providing solution hallelujah this guy is playing this keyboard he's solving a problem he's providing solutions it's easy to look at Don Muen and see what he's doing and say he's ministering but wait till you get into trouble and then you will see how much his songs can comfort you you will be forced to buy it that's why they never go out of the market because they didn't sing their opinion they just sang the word of god which abides forever you see that so a song that was sung in 1980 they know it will still be relevant i can i can i can sing a song that is dependent on my understanding at that time and it will expire when i grow but when you sing the word of god directly that was the secret of people it's still a secret of people like panam pasipo lord we are sorry people will keep saying we are sorry forever because of the stubbornness of the inhabitants in the earth so that's a song that will sell forever you will need it at one point of your life see that welfare department has zobo and donut immediately after the grace some of you are going to carry your 50 naira or 100 naira and give them you don't even know the face of the person you are giving because you are not interested there are some of you you don't know i want to ask you a question what is the name of kenneth copeland's church who knows the name of his church very few how can you not know the church of a popular man i want to show you something powerful what is the name of Benny Hinn's church? Who knows? 
what was the name of Smith Wigglesworth's wife? You don't care. All you know is the problem they solved. That's what remained with you. Are you getting my point now? Are you getting my point? It's amazing. Some of you don't even know the full meaning of ENI and, and frankly you don't care. All you know is that you came for miracle service. Something happened to you and you gathered your whole family members and brought them. And you said, some of you just said that meeting in CGC. You don't even know the name and you don't care. And you beat your chest and say, I'm a proud member. And truly you are. Some of you may not even know my name. And frankly, you don't care. All you care about is the solution. Trust me. If you stop getting blessed here for one month, it's not that you hate me. It's that you are desperate about your problem being solved. You will corner, you will just find somewhere diplomatically. The disciples were with John the Baptist. When Jesus showed up, he did something. One, two, three. They said, John, it's not like we don't love you, but we are designed to look for solution. Are you getting this? That means... You do not look for money. It is attracted. You never try to look for money. It's a quest that will end you in futility. Something brings it. When the king sends for you. Hallelujah. This is one of the greatest secrets also of a blessed ministry when you are anointed and the people are blessed the ministry will enjoy financial supplies from those impacted is that true say in the name of Jesus I have an ability to solve problems say in the name of Jesus there is something I have that can bring financial rewards when they employ you listen every time you see vacancy that company is telling you we have a problem can you solve it are you getting me now that's all they are saying vacancy there is a problem we have and you now apply in other words you are telling them i have the ability to solve that problem and they say let's test Praise God. All right. When they are interviewing you, they separate those who are going to create problems from those who will solve the problems. And they tell those creating the problems, we'll get back to you. There is a way you can become a money magnet and it's not by being a money monger. Listen, it's not by putting pictures of money all around your room like a fool. Go and remove it if you have that kind of thing. I know some of you have read the law of attraction and it's taught you godless things. That one will take you to hell. You don't put money all around your room. Some of you, you have it in your laptop. You, When you are lying down, you just put it around and you just listen to all kinds of useless songs. That's not the way it works. It doesn't work by covetous. That is lost. That is a craving that will kill you. Solve problems solve problems stop praying lord give me money say lord give me an ability to solve problems that's the prayer give me an ability to solve problems give me an ability i told you the problem close to you is your nearest exit the nearest exit a thief makes money without solving problems it's not solving any problem but it's making money that's why it's wrong a corrupt and wicked politician are you getting my point now makes money by siphoning from the resources if you are not solving a problem and you get rich sustainably you are doing something wrong you see the reason why those who send you all kinds of emails i was teaching the students in school of ministry when we we're talking about finance this is to announce to you you want to to million five hundred dollars huh some of you have gotten emails like that some of you are even hiding orders now you are still processing it don't waste your time 
those things are scams from the pit of hell it doesn't work like that that's how someone can stop you at the park and tell you come there's one money let's go to xyz all kinds of gimmicks happen in nigeria because people do not know how blessings come hallelujah it looks too simple for others to be blessed but for you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom that this thing there are spiritual laws that bring you into this truth that bring you into this thing and when you solve problems you open a gate for a dimension of blessings you may not be able to explain I see this happen all the time by the grace of God we are counseling people every Monday and it keeps increasing it keeps increasing we almost get embarrassed on Mondays because people have to sit at different places you think people will just travel from other states and just go to sit outside people sit under although we are working on it but people can decide to sit under a tree and sit for hours from morning to evening to see a man for five minutes you think people have that much time to waste everybody say becoming a solution there is something that can happen in your life that will make you prosperous this is the ability that uncommon ability to solve problems now turn with me to Deuteronomy 818 and you will understand what the Bible has been saying Deuteronomy 818 thank you Holy Spirit help somebody in the name of Jesus everyone please read is projected just write and let's save time one to read but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that gives you does it make sense to you now what does he give you what is the power to get well are you getting my point so what does God give you wealth he gives you an ability and the Bible says that ability can help you get wealth he gives you the power to get wealth what is the power to get wealth it's not favor the power to get wealth is not favor there is the Esther anointing there are other dimensions but that's not the power to get wealth the power to get wealth is what came upon Jacob that made are you getting my point the ability that made him solve a problem for Laban Laban kept him he said I testify that God has blessed me for your sake what kind of technology happened at the riverside that made animals to start multiplying because they were looking at water are you getting my point now Elisha had such an ability to solve problems Naaman carried gifts they carried everything see that's why prophets men of God in ancient times they knew their worth he sat inside the room he said who is this man king send him and let him know there is a prophet in Israel is it that there is no man that can solve a problem and the king had to come and wait outside kings to the brightness of your rising and he said servant tell him to go and bath seven times that's all that's the solution man said you mean that's the solution he said you can sit down there and waste your time or go and bath and he went seven times and when he saw listen i want to show you a powerful principle when he saw that he was clean he was too grateful to remain there he came back with gifts this is what will always happen it is the reward system of the kingdom are you getting my point now the reward system of the kingdom when they were looking for money jesus taught them a parable they needed to pay their tax and he looked at peter he said peter are you not a fisherman go to the river solve a problem get a fish open the mouth of that fish you will see money inside are you getting my point that means the money is tied to your gift to your ability open the mouth of that fish there is money inside are you listening to me could it be that where you are right now is because you have not identified a solution you can provide to your world 
this is the reason why you are suffering complex this is the reason why when you stand before men you feel inferior because the world has not seen what you can give yet they've had your noise they've had all kinds of things no sick body has been healed from your hand you have not given anybody any wisdom any proof that the wisdom of god works in your life every time you solve problems you attract money you attract god you attract people every time you solve problems because every problem you solve has millions of people looking for the same solution they will look for you that's why we can criticize how badly people are still lining up queuing up in front of shrines let me tell you if god gives you an ability to heal only hiv you will have the largest church in the world only hiv guaranteed with proof every time only hiv if wheelchairs come you tell them you can worship with us but don't expect anything just hiv people will let it work just let it work people were so desperate that the bible says when jesus entered the city it was noised it didn't tell us those who noised it it was noised abroad that a problem solver had come he entered the house of peter his mother had a fever and he just rebuked the fever and she got up jesus became so famous so blessed because he was solving a problem he solved the greatest problem of mankind this is why he sits on a throne and has a name that is above every other name see god did not just give him the name because he was jesus i hope you know that position had been vacant through the ages that was the contention in psalm 24 the earth is the lord's it didn't say it's for jesus it's the lord's whoever takes that title will sit on that throne and the bible says when he conquered death he rose up a coronation was held on his behalf the lord said to my lord sit down on that throne until all your enemies become your footstool and now he has been given that name the name is not jesus the name is lord it's an office the ultimate conqueror because he solved the problem what is the problem oh death where is thy sting he conquered death he conquered hell and he conquered the grave what are you conquering if you have not conquered anything don't blame god for you, for any poverty around your life what are you conquering whose problem are you solving god is asking you a question you will never excel in anything you are not gifted talented anointed or trained for gifted talented anointed or trained these things must happen you either be gifted talented anointed or trained say i'm a problem solver say it i'm a problem solver in the name of the lord jesus i'm a problem solver never run away from a problem a problem is an invitation to a financial reward system the purpose of conversation is to reveal a problem and solve it this is why people talk hallelujah i sit for hours and all i'm doing is talking with people and praying and they don't just tell me their names they don't sit down and say joshua selma what is your hobby or what color of shirts do you like the moment they sit down they tell me there is trouble sir and we hope you can help us hallelujah the world is full of pain and they are willing to pay anybody who can solve it no matter how small the world is so desperate that even if you are fake you can be blessed from it they are so desperate people don't verify they are desperate even when they perceive value they pay for it there are prayer homes you drop 30,000 no stories it doesn't matter what your problem is from headache to death you drop 30,000 straight from the outer court even before you see the man of God and there are hundreds of people that troop in day and night they don't mind hallelujah can I tell you something people will pay anything anything any price 
There are people that left Abuja this morning. There are people that come in every week from Kaduna, every week from Kano. There are people who have come all great distances because they believe there is a solution. Are you getting my point now? That means you remain relevant to the degree to which you continue solving problems and you grow in it. You grow in it. You grow in it. There is a kind of problem we will solve that will attract kings. Kings to the brightness. Gentiles come to your light but it's the brightness that attract kings. They have seen light but when they see it rising it becomes too notable. The wise men saw a light and they started following it. They went to the house of the one who had that light. They saw a star and they started following the star. If the star took them to Egypt, they will go. If the star took them to Bethlehem, they will go. If the star anywhere, they were not concerned about the distance. They said, we want to know who made a star to rise like this. And the Bible says, they that be wise, Daniel 12 verse 3. It says, they shall be like the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness like the stars, even forevermore. I refuse to be a failure. I found my way out of failure forever in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you can be soaking Gary right now and know that is a matter of time. There are six billion people. There is enough room for everyone. There's no room for competition at all. There are too many problems. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. every hospital that is built has people because there are sick people hallelujah whose problem are you solving right now whose problem are you solving right now if you solve the problem of a millionaire you have access to his millions this is what makes us powerful we can solve the problem of the rich the poor the blind higher let me not go faster than myself. A businessman can only solve the problem of poverty. A doctor can only solve the problem of ill health. But a spiritual man, come on now. A spiritual man now. He has an anointing and has an ability that makes him relevant in all spheres. If pastors knew this, we would not relegate ourselves to look like idiots who are just relevant in church. Come on now. There is an ability of the spirit that can make you stand anywhere and communicate the counsel of God with wisdom. They said, what wisdom is this? Jesus spoke to politicians. Jesus spoke to doctors of the law. Jesus spoke to laymen. He had the ability to multiply bread, fish, whatever it is. I have an ability. I have an ability. I can document my persuasion in a book and lay my hands on it and it will bring bread to my table. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's why a thief is a fool. He mocks God by stealing. With the problems in the whole world, when a man steals, it's a mockery to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Write this down. The power to get wealth is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer. Just write, I'm still speaking. The power to get wealth is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer to possess uncommon abilities to provide solutions. The power to get wealth, this is my definition is the supernatural ability of the holy spirit upon a believer to possess uncommon abilities to solve problems not to solve health problems not to solve demon problems if it's a wisdom problem there is an ability if it's a leadership problem there is an ability if it's an entrepreneurial problem there is an ability are you getting my point now let me tell you, if you know this, you will honor the Holy Spirit with your life. 
play with the Holy Spirit, you play with your financial destiny, among other things. Your presence is heaven to me. Very powerful song. Your presence is heaven to me. You see why I value the presence of the Holy Spirit so much? Take the Holy Spirit away from me. I'm as useless as, as a chair or a chair that is broken. For me, the Holy Spirit is not a Pentecostal part of me. The Holy Spirit is my life. He's the only reason why I know I can be relevant to my generation. The only reason. He has put a treasure inside of you that can make the whole world look for you. Hallelujah. Everybody say in the name of Jesus, there is an ability of the Spirit that is at work in me that empowers me to solve problems, that empowers me to be creative, to provide solutions for the problems of mankind and it brings me into a realm of consistent unending financial reward take everything i have today i will get it back it's a matter of time all i need is the presence of the holy spirit and the wisdom of the word he will give you an ability this is what makes you a money magnet there are some of you that came with seeds after the service you are coming to bless me with it's not pride and this is not the last time it will happen it will keep happening again and again because there is this treasure everybody say there is this treasure in earthen vessel this is why i give him glory you see why i worship him because if god does not add any other thing to me i don't he doesn't owe me anything He's given me everything. It now makes sense to you why the Bible says, He that did not spare his son, but offered him freely, will he not much more give you all things? And he said, I have given you the Holy Spirit. What else? It's because we think the Holy Spirit just makes us pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit will be relevant in every area of your life. Hallelujah. When they employ you and you solve such problems, to an extent that they look at you and they forget about what you studied there are people who work in lagos but live in kaduna the company pays their flight ticket twice or three times every week they are not complaining and they are not tired because without them the company will die when you become that kind of person no i don't care what cause is in your village are you getting my point that that partnership with the holy spirit will bind the devil by himself A day will come this thing you see the crowd here will only be one department in e and i a day will come we will keep solving the problems bit by bit distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us those who pack sewage your sock away you laugh at them but they are solving problems everybody goes to toilet and you will keep going to toilet every day predictable business true or false is that true I was talking to the school of, school of ministry students the other time and I told them if I'm to establish a business at that point, I will establish a public toilet. I wouldn't look for, for pure water and all of the public toilet. Sooner or later, everybody is going to need it. I don't need to market it. I just need to keep it there. You will look for it. When the problem becomes serious, you will look for it. It's a law. You can make noise, you can catwalk, you can smile. When problems get serious, 
people become desperate for solutions. Hallelujah. This is swan water. Are you getting my point? Did anybody create water? Some people just sat down and calculated and they knew that man about is it 70 percent or there about of our body am i right it's made up of water good business that means you need to replenish it otherwise you will die and they simply package water are you getting my point now and they are making money they've been doing this thing for years till today they've not run out of money because there are six billion people goats drink water house drink water hallelujah are you getting my point now there must be something what is business business is simply packaging your ability to solve problems so that you can meet a targeted audience and you receive financial rewards that's what business is business is not about ceo first class business is the art the ability to package your value to package your ability to solve problems. If you write a book, you now see why Jesus, excuse me, why Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. You are the salt of the earth. He gave you a clue to your prosperity. He said, you are the salt of the earth. He said, you are the light of the world. I carry this consciousness every day. Pastor, one day we will stand before kings. We will snap before kings. It will be an honor for them to snap with us. We are not going to go begging. Men of God, we will return back the dignity of priesthood. Not go around chasing politicians. They will look for us. Distant shores and the islands will see your life. I shared with you my story I think one time when we were having one financial series I went to one bank years ago to go and beg for a loan they embarrassed me they harassed me they insulted me they disgraced me sent me out and I laughed come on now I said one day it's me and the manager that will enter and I'll go straight to his office and while I'm drinking tea they will be talking business with me it will happen banks look for men of God to give them loan without collateral they call the name of the capital human capital where your presence is greater than 1,000 acres of land your presence is heaven to me there are some of you when they employ you they are not going to use the normal timing to promote you again you will be too relevant there will be an ability of the spirit in you are you getting my point you will put your salary by yourself believe what i'm saying are you seeing the reason why there are many struggling youths around stop struggling master the art take advantage be like nehemiah with one hand hold the sword with another hand the ability to build the world will look for you skilled people are scarce genuine people are scarce gifted people are scarce don't take for granted that because you are gifted everybody is gifted gifted people are scarce hallelujah praise the lord banks are running around looking for aliko dangote running around looking for ten dollar and all of these wealthy people to give them loans they are running running from others running to others i will run to god so that every other thing will run to me it must run to me everything gravitates around this origin i will run to god and every other thing must run to me say i have an anointing let me tell you what you have very quickly what do you have please write there is always what you have and when you can use what you have it is enough 
there is always what you have number one you have integrity right things that can add value integrity your integrity can solve a problem you may not have naira and kobo but you can build yourself and have integrity number two wisdom number three understanding there is a difference understanding the comprehension of how things work in the kingdom this is called understanding the dynamics of the operation of the kingdom is called understanding and this is part of the ministry of the holy spirit Isaiah 11 verse 3 he says and he shall make you of quick understanding that's what was given Solomon an understanding heart it was an understanding heart that made him wise number three number four you have gifts and skill your giftings whether from your degree whether from your talent this guy can play keyboard hallelujah there are many of you that can sing tosin you can sing you can play keyboard when you sharpen it enough you'll be amazed hallelujah there are many of you who can speak on common oratory the ability to communicate with precision That's your exit out of trouble. That's your exit out of inferiority. Hallelujah. There are those that God has given leadership acumen. The ability to lead. There are people in this place, at least I know them, who have written books and their books are about going out of this country. Pastor, we will write books. He will put an unction upon us. We will write books that nations will read. It will solve the problems of nations. It will solve the problem of governments. Say I'm a world changer. Say it with conviction. I'm a world changer. There is an ability in me. I can never be poor. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in me. You must refuse it. Your ability to solve problems and to add value to humanity. Day and night, I say this with all humility. This is just a bit of my private life. People interrupt my private life with all kinds of gifts at this level where we are just starting. You imagine what they would do to you. Jesus was just born. Just born, they brought gifts. Just born. Just born, they brought gold frankincense and man he was just born there is an ability that we have koinonia listen to me inside and outside god is speaking to somebody you are not a known entity you may not be able to speak english but there is something you have the world will excuse your inability to speak because of that thing you have are you getting what i'm saying Some of us here who are students, your lecturer may have insulted you. You are looking at your CGPA 1.5, 2.0, or you graduated with third class or pass, and you are saying, I'm finished. Don't mock God. Come on now. You have more than that. There's too much darkness. Don't mock God. There is a wolf prosperity. The world is too dark. They need you. They will die for what you have. Hallelujah. Die for what you have. Every time I wake up in the morning, I rejoice. Because I still wake up with his wisdom at work in me. I still wake up with his anointing at work in me. When I'm about to counsel people, shortly before they start entering, I say, thank you, Lord. The wisdom is there. I didn't refrigerate it. I don't need to cook it this morning to work. I don't need to prime it. It's there. It's resident inside of me. And I tell the people, begin to come one by one. And I am amazed to see the hand of Elohim 
tonight we are going to pray Esther had something to offer many people look at Esther's beauty but they do not know that she had courage courage if I perish I perish that was courage and with that courage she solved the problem there is someone God is speaking to do you know that if you start that restaurant you will solve a problem you have been complaining that there are many people there are plenty who told you there are plenty you know how many hungry people are in this earth everybody if I eat your food a sign that is sweet is you should see me there again if I buy chair from you don't you don't need to see me there after two years and God has been speaking to you start up that restaurant and you are there complaining and grumbling this is an elderly woman I'm speaking to and God is speaking to you hallelujah there are many of you that your hands are gifted your hands are blessed there is an anointing upon your life there is something you can do stop calling yourself adolescent stop calling yourself young adult it doesn't exist an adult is one who is not a child as simple as that once you are not a child you are an adult whether you believe it or not hallelujah everybody here has an ability to solve problems you have wisdom you have integrity you have grace if you don't have anything you have an anointing of the spirit you can educate you can teach there are schools that are resident in many of us right now schools that will be built there are homes there are institutes there are leadership institutes there are real estate mokus that are sitting down here some of you are just sitting down the bare land you are seeing in nigeria that you call a village is your inheritance that's where god will keep you and you will shake creation with your wisdom there are inventors there are all kinds of people sitting down listening to me and god is speaking to you and then there are men of god those who have been anointed to push back the darkness as if satan does not exist and we will keep doing it whether we do it free do it free don't ask people to pay for anointing you still mock god they can pay for your products they can pay for 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 your book or tapes and cds it is based on this revelation we can give all our messages free you know why because god will still reward us it is the reward system our concentration now is to bless you let me tell you the truth when you are blessed some of you some of you tomorrow you are the ones who will come and sponsor you will set up a whole studio for eni you will do it single-handedly as a show of gratitude thou shall remember the lord thy god for he has given you the power to get wealth what did he give you the power that means it's within you right now if you are born again the power to get wealth is within you let me tell you the name of the power to get wealth the ability to solve problems say it the ability to solve problems sweetheart you make bed sheets stand up please this lady makes beautiful bed sheets she made one beautiful bed sheet for me do you know how many people will be willing to buy that bed sheet matilda and sandra they started i think an ella also they started making zobo three days ago yesterday they received 200 percent increase on their business because they started they focused on adding cucumber flavor to their zobo i took it school of ministry student did you take it respond you are looking as if you didn't take it hallelujah when welfare started making sobo here they started making money stop praying give me money stop being angry with your uncle be angry with yourself provoke yourself to to get out of that season hallelujah there are so many people who can address listen listen this is very important there are so many people right now who have the ability to solve the problems in their homes hallelujah extra moral center do you know that there are people who can have an extra moral center huh? an extra moral place that teaches 
25,000 in Abuja, people are paying over 25,000 just for lesson. Are you so dull? Didn't you get A in English? Why are you still sitting down? You know how many people are struggling to get C in English. Imagine that you have an extra moral center packaged with excellence and you are teaching people just maths and English. That's your own. Don't go and teach French or, or CRS. No, I know you're a Christian. Just teach maths and English. And tell the people, don't laugh. I'm very serious. I want to challenge you because we are going to pray shortly. Tell the people, guaranteed, maths and English for your YEC. 25,000. If you have 10 students, you don't need a mic. 10 students. How much is that? 250,000. That's what somebody in the oil company receives that we call a big boy. Am I challenging you? There are some of us, you have big laptops in your, in your rooms and your homes. You are just watching it. You have one desktop. Can you not set up a business center? Set up something in your room. You don't need AC. Forget about that false life. People are not... They, they don't want to know if you have suit or you can speak English. Can you print? Can you type? That's all they care about. There are some of you that are makeup consultants. It's just that you are average. You are average. The only face you make up is your own. You can rise to excellence. People pay thousands of naira and dollars so that they can make them up. I'm showing you that the power to get wealth is resident within you. You will have to stand up. He said, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. There are some of you that cook. You can bake, but you don't want to improve yourself. Your wealth is there. There is power to get wealth. Are you listening to me? There are some of you, God has blessed you with some small money. 100,000, 500,000. Two or three of you can come together. Buy a golf. Buy a golf. Work with either the protocol department or anybody. Get responsible drivers. Put it on the road. Pastor, the person that drives me with, just within last year, within last year, he changed his car twice. He just takes me on charter around. Twice. There are many of our parents that cannot afford 5,000 naira to eat well at home, but they have over nine cars scattered outside. One, the tire is on top of the car. The other one, the, 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 the suspension is scattered. Can't you fix it and patch it and put it on the road? Anything that is in your life that you are not using and you are not putting to use is a waste. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you can even start, even if it is Akara and Pap. You see, the problem with Nigerians is, this fake life that we have, listen to me, if you don't repent from it, you will die a broke failure. I'm not insulting you, I'm just challenging you. Someone can buy a shoe of 40,000, huh? buy a suit of, of 100,000, do you know how much the people who make Akara, you know how much they make in a day? Some of you, after this koinonia right now, you are marching straight there. You alone, you will buy over 300 naira Akara yam. You eat part of it today, wrap the remaining, eat it in the morning. They make money every day. Some of you can go into retailing. Go into retailing. Retail pure water. I'm challenging you. I'm not the kind of preacher that will just tell you, take, take, receive. No, no. Rise up and be productive. Solve problems and be rich. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are some of you sitting down here. You have two or three clippers in your house. How many heads do you have? How many times do you bab in a week? Flamboyancy that's not bringing results in your life. If you carry one of those clippers and you go and put it, give somebody.
go and rent a shop around. Hallelujah. Popcorn machine. There are about 40,000 students in ABU, Samaru campus alone. How many popcorn machines do we have? I don't think they are up to 20 in that whole campus. How many saloons, ladies? How many lady heads do we have? At least 10 or 20,000. How many saloons do we have? I'm showing you how believers do not rise up to take responsibility. Car wash. Car wash. A car wash joint. Some of you can have a car wash joint. I didn't say go and wash cars. Set it up and get people. You think it won't work? They gave you scholarship of 250,000. You went around because a lady said she likes you. You went and did unwise things with the money. Now she has left you. The money too has left you. These are all the, the careless things we do around. The truth is, for some of us, God has been faithful to us. Some money has come in here and there. But we are just careless. We don't think. We spend, we eat it and eat our destiny. If you eat what you should eat tomorrow, today, you will die of hunger tomorrow. Hallelujah. Poultry. Poultry. Pastor, my mother started poultry with about 20 birds. I think day old or week old birds. 20. But today, my mother's poultry is enough to feed the family. Who is God speaking to tonight? That the power to get wealth is resident within you. The power to get wealth is resident. Some of you are graphic designers. You are excellent. You are just sitting down, hoping that one day you will announce yourself. Where is the one day? The media department is looking for excellent graphic designers. Are you getting my point? They are paying people. Some of you make shirts. My friend, Ejimi, it was in this Zaria. A point came, he was taking contracts of about 1.2 million every year guaranteed to make shirts. Shirts that you make. Creativity. Some of you plot. You are just not serious. You plot as occasion serves you. When someone wants to plot and you are saying, I'm watching film because you have not seen that it can employ you and bless you. Hallelujah. Do you know that this work that the protocol is doing, there are, there are institutes that are logistic. Is that true, Pastor? When you are organizing crusades, weddings, or programs, you contract it. Aaron is here. Aaron works with a, a, a newspaper company in Abuja. But Aaron also has his company, Third Lord Projections. They are into event management. So don't be angry when you see him blessed. He's not just praying in tongues. He's solving problems. Together with Victor, they have managed, they have managed a lot of weddings that happen in this area. Some of you have that ability. The power to get wealth. God gave it to you. Some of you are excellent editors. You are so good. Some of you are brilliant. You can set up a school. You can set up one of our one of our people in the prayer band here, Josiah, he spoke to me and we spoke with him. Right now, as I speak to you, he has set up a tutorial center where he's serving. It's called Zenith Educational Center. I, I guided him, helped him and prayed on it. He has set up a tutorial center. Zenith Tutorial Center. Look at the beautiful name. He brought one kind of name for me. I said, what is all this? It's a tutorial center. Give it a beautiful name. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to somebody here? What do you have in your house? You will use that thing to solve a problem and get yourself out of here. In the next five minutes, we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Please, I want everybody to pray. We are wrapping up this session and we really are going to pray. You must crystallize this that I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. Instrumentalists, help me. In the next five minutes, you are going to cry and say, Lord, that ability of the spirit that is locked up inside of me, that thing that
that came upon me when your anointing came you can keep falling and rising falling and rising falling and rising and nothing will change but tonight i want you to pray there is something you have your musical ability the anointing god has given you lift up your voice and begin to pray i like you to pray pray koinonia there is an ability of the spirit an ability to solve problems an ability to solve problems where there is no problem you are insignificant where there is no problem outside inside cry to god some of you are crying on behalf of your family you are saying lord this is it my father may not be working my mother may not be working what rod have you given us oh god what rod have you put in my hands show me oh god open my eyes oh god open my eyes oh god open my eyes oh god show me where the treasure is within me that can feed my generation that can feed my family that can bring me to relevance please pray hallelujah hallelujah please pair yourselves into three if you can you're going to pray i like you to pray for the next few seconds radically in tongues you're going to say lord i call out that grace that treasure resident within my brother within my sister go ahead and begin to pray lord we call it out entrepreneurial grace we call it out creativity we call it out Material anointing, we call it out. Leadership anointing, we call it out. No room for laziness. It's a season of prosperity. We are taking advantage of the power of the Holy Ghost at work in us to solve problems. hallelujah hallelujah lastly you're going to prophesy upon your life you're going to say i'm a bank of solutions i'm solving all kinds of problems lift your voice and pray prophesy it no more inferiority in my life I found my way out. There is something I have. Pray. Prophesy to yourself. I have wisdom. I have integrity. Prophesy. I have business acumen. Leadership skills. Prophesy. Shake it, shake it, never go so break it, never run out of us. Man, brother, can't tell you much. Prophesy upon your degree. It's not a waste. It's not a waste. Prophesy 
upon your masters your phd is not a waste god can use it to bless you you can solve problems Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please write the following books down. I want to recommend a few books for you. If you can get them, that would be great. Is Jordan around? Hallelujah. You brought the school of money. Please bring it. 10 M's of money. Matthew Ashimolo. A few books that can help you. I'm going to encourage everybody to get a book. Hallelujah. This book changed my life. Hallelujah. It's called School of Money. It's a very expensive book. It's not cheap. Many books have changed my life. This is one of them. It significantly changed my life. I think it's about maybe seven, eight thousand, seven thousand, or thereabouts. It's about seven thousand. This is expensive, but this may be one of the greatest investments. You is not my book. Are you getting my point? I've been too blessed. You can sit down with this book and literally change your financial future. It's about 600 pages and none of the pages are useless trust me when i tell you this it's a very very powerful book it was written by olumide emmanuel one of my financial mentors one of the people that has impacted my life truly hallelujah 10 m's of money matthew shimono money will not make you rich money will not make you rich sonia delaja you can get the books with Jordan because of the cost I, you can book with him if you want to Jordan is our official we don't have a bookstore so for now we're using Jordan to promote him and bless him so you can book with him I don't know how much I think it should not be 7,000 all right you can book with him he can go and get it for you money will not make you rich on their delaja the covenant of wealth Bishop Oyedepo you mustn't read all of them just write them the covenant of wealth bishop oyedeko the law of prosperity kenneth copeland three most important things mike mudok three most important things mike mudok school of money the book i just showed you olumide emmanuel Olumide Emmanuel School of Money Blessed to be a blessing Kenneth Copeland Blessed to be a blessing Kenneth Copeland How to come out of debt David Ibiome How to come out of debt David Ibiome Secrets of the richest man who ever lived Mike Murdoch I'm not giving you any business books there are a number of business books that can help you okay let me just give two unfair advantage Robert Kiyosaki unfair advantage Robert Kiyosaki rats to riches r-a-t-s to riches you can get the videos I think they are free. Would have made it available in the media, but I don't know if that reaches it will bless you. It's not just one of these dog books. Rats to riches. There are many more, but this few will help you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and bless the Lord for tonight. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now please keep standing. Before I make the altar call, I'll just give Pastor Pete one minute. You just say hi to the house and prophesy. 
Hallelujah. He's my friend. I love him. Celebrate him, please, Pastor. Please celebrate him inside and outside Koinonia. Praise the name of the Lord. Wisdom is the ability to solve a problem. Wisdom is the ability to solve a problem. Whenever we come to a service like this, um, there's a tendency for us to get caught up by the euphoria and miss the principle. You see, when you follow a man, you do not have to follow the personality of the man. All you need to do to become like that man is to follow his principle. He says, I know that you are a wise and discreet man. That's what the scripture says. And he said, and the spirit of God is in you. You see, wisdom is not head knowledge. It is heart knowledge. There's a difference. So most times when we come, we are hearers of the word. When we leave, the most important key of leaving this place is to become a doer of God's word. The Bible says, if you do not do, you are deceiving yourself. One version says, you are fooling yourself. I like the message translation. It says, you are cheating yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Very few preachers will teach you principles of getting out of poverty. Not just the anointing now. There's an anointing for it. But there are principles so that when you come out, you will know the way out of that city. You will know the road. You can repeat the principle again and again. If they pick you up, you don't have to look for a man to lay hands on you or to pray for you or a prophet to prophesy into your destiny. You just need the principle. If I can get the principle, I can change my life. If I can get that principle, I can change my life. Give me the principle. Just hand me over that principle. What do you do to get you from here to there? Just tell me. Tell me. One plus one is equal to two. That's all I need. If I can get it in my heart, I will change my life. I prophesy to you that you will not just be a hearer. You will be a doer of God's word. You will not just be excited about the message. You go out there and you will do what the word says you should do. As from today, when you receive instruction from the spirit, you will not forget. You will not be like that man that looks in the mirror and forgets. As from today, you will be a doer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now keep standing. I want to give an opportunity to those who have never given their lives to Christ. Listen. Um... We believe in the salvation of souls. And there are many people who probably are just coming here for the first time. Or others who have come and you've been struggling with a lot of things. You've been struggling with sin. You've been struggling with all kinds of habits and everything. And some of you may have been born again at one time. But sincerely you know that right now your standing is not right with God. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. And I want to stand with you and lead you back to the cross and lead you back to Jesus Christ. As I make that call, please, I want you to leave wherever you are, inside or outside. Don't wait for anyone. I'd like you to just come, take a bold step and I'll pray with you. Right now, God bless you. God bless you. There are people like that. God bless you. Please make sure you don't sit back inside and outside. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you have found yourself derailing. God bless you. They are coming. I appreciate them. Those of you coming, God bless you. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. Make sure you don't sit back if the Lord is speaking to you. Inside and outside, I know that there are people that need to make it right with Jesus Christ tonight. We will wait for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. If there are still people outside, please double up and come. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be ashamed. The Bible says, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast away. This is the greatest miracle in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are still in the crowd, just find your way as I pray for you. Thank you. I salute your courage. I want you to lift your right hand and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I thank you for the gift of salvation. Today, I denounce sin and Satan and I accept Jesus as Lord of my life. I confess 
that I receive eternal life in my spirit. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Make me a wonder to my generation in the name of Jesus. Now let me pray with you. Father, thank you so much because you brought these ones to bless them. I honor you for what you have done in their lives. You will preserve them in the name of Jesus Christ. Now please follow the ushers. They will have your details and they will give you a few announcements. God bless you. Thank you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. In a few minutes we will be out of here. Please, if you are worshipping with us for the first time, we have a blessing, a prayer, and a prophecy for you. I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here quickly. Inside or outside, if you, this is your first time, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Please find your way to the front as I take the announcement. Don't sit back. God brought you here. You are special to us. We want to bless you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Keep coming. No matter how far, keep coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. Were you blessed tonight? This is Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International. We bless God for what He's doing in this place. And I assure you, your life will never be the same in Jesus' name. We pray that you will find hunger for the things of the spirit. You will find wisdom. You will find understanding of how this kingdom works. Hallelujah. We want to pray and prophesy and bless you. And we want you to receive it with all your heart. Saints of God, stretch your hands and bless them. Prophesy. We call you blessed. We bless you with the hunger that we have here for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus, we bless you with wisdom. We bless you with passion for the things of the kingdom. We bless you with grace in the name of Jesus Christ. You are moving from glory to glory. You will enjoy financial prosperity. You will enjoy the hand of God in your life. Whatever sickness or challenge you came here with, we declare that it leaves you this night in the name of Jesus. We celebrate you. We thank you for coming in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Please, I'd like you to just walk, follow that usher. They'll give you a few informations and they'll have your details. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them one more time. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto break kete kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.